Hi everybody, my name is Cindy Jacobs and I wanted to, first of all, really thank you for so many that have written to me and texted me um, their encouraging words. I really appreciate it because I, I love the Lord and I'm not a classic trained pastor or preacher by any means, but I definitely can speak from the heart and share stories that I hope can inspire, encourage, uplift, and keep someone going during you know tough times and there's a story that I wanted to share many of you know um, but there was a time when um, I worked full-time from about 25 to 45 I don't know I don't know ages but there was a time when I worked um, down in Atlantic City and I worked my way up and um, had a really good position and did really well financially um, and I always knew to go to church first then go to work I always tithed to my 10% if not more I was always diligent in sharing Jesus with others at work um, I always tried my best of course we all fail to represent him and be a good testimony you know oftentimes you hear people say you may be the only sign of Jesus that someone ever meets the only light that someone meets in their entire you know career their entire lifetime even which is really sad and daunting but it does come with great responsibility for us so I, I always remembered that and I always just tried to do the best I could in representing the Lord if someone would come into the office and take the Lord's name in vain I would say that's not God's fault that you're having a bad day and people always received it and I appreciate that and I really it was a family unit there um, and unbeknownst to me uh, the Lord started speaking to me and working on me and really giving me a slap that I was starting to put the job. Um, we had a great pool and in the summertime, the pool, I had gotten two new little kittens, Romeo and Toby, and he really laid my sin of idolatry right out in front of me. And he listed, I mean, Christian laughs is that I didn't even rank first, but he was in the list, but the point is, is God was saying, I'm not pleased with you. Um, and he was very stern. And as much as our father loves us, he disciplines us because he does love us. And I'm forever grateful that he um, really was telling me he wasn't happy with me. And he, he told me, you know, if you continue to put all of this before me, I'm going to start taking away your blessings. Um, and he pretty much had spoken to my heart and started to work on me that there was going to come a time when he was going to call me out of the job. Um, and I was really scared, and but I was prepared, but I know he was showing mercy. Um, there wasn't much I could do. I mean, financially, we had a home and cars and debt, and you know, there wasn't exactly a lot of money in the bank, and that's my fault, but um, there really wasn't a lot of warning um, other than him just saying that if I didn't change my ways, he was going to start taking things away. Um, and I got scared and he told me, you know, um, to trust him that the road was going to be hard, but to trust him. Um, and sure enough, on July 5th, the day after a really big holiday in our business, we were in the time trip business vacation travel, uh, down the shore in New Jersey, big, huge season. And, um, I had had a lot of my coworkers over the night before for a party and a barbecue so God did that purposely purposely because there was a lot of witnesses that I was in a great frame of mind I had was not discussing quitting or walking out or um, in any way expressing any kind of discontentment um, so when I drove into work the next day I actually had one of my friends and her son with me um, and they also were my witness that uh, we were having a great time and I have to tell you, it was probably a couple hours into my shift and it was real quiet. You could hear a pin drop and that's so unusual for July 4th weekend because everybody was in town on their free stays and the hotel was packed and there were no sales. No one was coming into my office. Um, and it was, it was, God, it was amazing. It was almost not to be so dramatic, but when he parted the sea and let everyone get through that were being chased and when Joshua asked for more time and he made the sun stand still, it was like he just stood, stopped time, and um, prepared me to actually leave the office, leave the premises. 
and it was about quarter of two and I was in my office and he just said, it's time. And I quietly said, okay. And I called in uh, my one friend who I'd driven in and she was off that day. And even the fact that she was there and her son was there and we quietly packed up my car. Um, I gave some of my, you know, business things to uh, one of the girls that worked for me. And I said, wait till I leave the building and um, tell them, you know, that I'm leaving. And uh, that was it. I walked out of the job and I resigned on the spot. And I woke up the next day and I said to the Lord, well, you have my attention. What is it you have to say to me? And he shared with me, you've lived in excess for too long. Um, so the lesson of adultery, <laughs> first off. And then he told me that I relied too much on myself and my um, finances and the job. And um, he said, now you're going to rely totally on me. And he actually put me on a challenge right there in the kitchen the morning of the day after and put me on a challenge and said, you live the nexus for too long and um, had me literally go on a 40 day. And a lot of people read the blog. I wrote it for about seven years, six years called Purposeful Ingredients. And he challenged me to make 40 dinners, 40 meals in the kitchen with all the ingredients that I had and not go shopping without the excess of, you know, like coffee, whatever. He was merciful with that. And he, yeah, basically just said, you're now going to rely on me. It was almost like Survivor in Williamstown, New Jersey. And I did not go shopping. And I actually blogged the ingredients that I used, the recipe that I came up with. And it was kind of neat. You didn't realize how much chicken I had <laughs> in my house. But the point is, is he put me on a 40-day um challenge to just rely solely on him and years later you you know that 40 is a, a really uh big number in the bible and uh he was he was changing my heart changing my priorities preparing me for a more humble time um he always provided we always had clothes the roof bills were paid um you know a lot of people said you're being irresponsible i could never do that you know, I need my 401k and I have this, this and that in the back. I don't want to be poor. You know, I don't want to lose my car, my home. And I just, I knew that I just needed to be tunnel vision, focus on the Lord. I kept my spiritual blinders on. He shared so much with me during that time. It was an, an amazing time, very intimate time with the Lord. Um, and I learned so much about how idolatry is that silent sin that you don't even know that you're doing. You don't even know you're committing. We're not talking about sex and drugs and, you know, thievery. We're talking about kittens that you just got that you're putting before reading the, the Word of God. We're talking about, you know, missing church or a Bible study because you want to be the first one to leave a shift and not close. We're talking about just putting your marriage in front of God or, you know, some people do their kids and you know, they miss school or miss work, um, excuse me, church, you know, because they have school activities for the kids and they think they're being noble and they are. But unfortunately, God comes first and it's idolatry. Anything that comes before the Lord in Exodus 20, three to six speaks real clear. Nothing comes before God. No other gods before him. And God's come in all form of um, things in life. Um, but the greater lesson was obedience, that obedience unlocked his power in my life and I remember Charles Stanley told me a long time ago obedience um, unlocks his supernatural power and obedience brings blessings great blessings and I'm not saying it was as extreme as Abraham putting his son down on the altar and was willing to sacrifice him for the Lord um, but I did sacrifice my family and our security in what I placed my trust in which was the finances and a job and a, a good paying job um all because the lord said it's time and uh people watched me people watched how i was going to react what was going to happen um so eyes were on me and um it actually worked out where you know i quit on the spot but the employer naturally i understand fired me for job abandonment and the truth is is because of that I was able to collect unemployment for almost two years so to God be the glory you know he'll turn anything around um, but the truth is is he he will he will um, 
discipline you and you have to listen and you have to obey. And one of the scriptures I just wanted to share real quick um, is obedience. John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You know, we must obey God rather than man. That's Acts 5, 29. That's referring to your job, your boss. You know, yes, we have to work and, and of course, but if someone's asking you to do something that doesn't align with the Bible, you're supposed to put God in front of that and trust that God will provide. Um, as obedient children, don't be conformed to the patterns of the world. You know that. Um, they're all scriptures that you can actually do a study on in a great length and you would actually be really blessed by it. So be encouraged. And if God's nudging at your heart to do something that you haven't done, um, do it. And, you know, it all ties into the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, we're all called to share the Lord with others. And it could be through life affirmation, the testimony of just the story I just shared of, uh, of faith, of putting God before my own needs and my own security. Um, and I have to tell you, he has blessed us. He has always been there. Um, he has never let us down. My husband and I recently relocated to Florida. Same kind of thing without really a lot of preparation. He has provided. We're at peace. And obedience unlocks his power. And obedience unlocks his peace. So be encouraged. Share the Lord. Don't be afraid. Wear the shirt. Um, and... Uh, see what he does and obey what he says and don't be afraid what other people are going to think about you you may lose relationships you may lose friends you may lose family members god comes first god will replace those in your life with many more he has in my life and i want you to be encouraged to share the lord share the gospel power comes from the gospel the, there's truth and the power and let the spirit speak to you and and guide you to what needs to be said and what needs to be shared but i'll tell you if you work your employers are watching you if you're at church they're watching you if you're just a stay-at-home mom which is the most important job of all i mean to say just meaning your children are watching you people are watching you at the supermarket you know, we heard a quick story, and I'll let you go, where our old pastor said that he was having workers in the house, and one was using horrible language, horrible language, and at the end, they were getting ready to set up the payment, and he said, oh, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a pastor. He goes, oh, I'm a Christian, and the pastor looked at him, and he says, well, I, I forget the thing about, um, my husband would know better, um, something that comes up from the well only I, I don't know I'm going to botch the story but the point is is the pastor looked at him like you're sure about that um because he wasn't bearing a testimony that was pleasing to the Lord so just just know that your your life you may be saving someone just by your uh the way you live your life the way you speak about Christ the way you share Christ um, you know, right now we're talking about thank Thanksgiving and acts of kindness. Um, just share the Lord. A cup of coffee and say, God loves you. You know, I was in church the other day and I was praising the Lord, doing a praise and worship. And he said, I want you to tell her, the woman next to me, who she was crying. And he said, tell her I have her. And I said, okay. And I kind of waited and he said, tell her that I have her. And I just leaned over and I touched her shoulder and I whispered in her ear. I said, the Lord wants me to let you know that he has you. I said, whatever that means. And she kind of smiled and kind of nervously giggled. And that's okay. At first I was like, oh. And Christian said, you know, you, you did, you obeyed the Lord. You gave the message. That's how she receives it. That's between her and the Lord. Um, and that's the point. You do your part. You love God, love others, serve God, serve others. Um, show his love. Happy Thanksgiving. Sorry, I rattled on a little bit. And I wish I remembered that that one quote. It was a good quote, but I don't have the memory like my husband. Um, God loves you. I love you. I thank you so much for coming to the page and click in. I also wanted to give a quick little plug that our store just went on sale. The entire store. There's over 400 products. Something for everyone. You could do shop, pay, which means you could buy now and pay over four interest-free payments. Um, but the entire store went just live about an hour ago, 15% off. The entire store, 
no minimum purchase. You can use it as much as you want. No codes are needed. When you check out, you'll automatically save 15%. Um, that's my way of thanking you. So God bless you, and we'll talk soon.